birthday to you. I'm the only person who walks anywhere in Los Angeles. There's like nobody around walking. American Muscle, Ford Explorer, another one. Now I'm going to pick up uh, Zied and Adam, drive down to Huntington Beach. So this should be the last time we go and scout the location before the special. We're to load in on Friday, meaning loading in all the camera gear, all the stages, the camera platforms, the blackout curtains around the entire thing, everything else with a smaller team. And then on Saturday, it's all hands on deck. It's probably about 15 to 20 people just on our side, not even on the brewery side. So Friday, we'll run all the cab cables, do everything that needs to be installed, get all the camera positions locked down. And then on Saturday, everyone gets there, kind of tweaks everything, and then there we go. So it's getting close. As of right now, we are under two weeks away. I'm not scared, I'm not nervous, I'm excited. And right now I am more in producer mode than I am in uh, performer mode. Like I'm not even thinking about the performance at all. I'm thinking about like the logistics of everything because it, this is a great team and Adam is like, he, he's super solid. And so I know day of that he'll have everything taken care of and I don't have to worry about anything. And that's how I need to be as a performer. I need to be able to go there and just walk in, do my thing, stay in my in my entertainer's headspace and just go and do my thing and not have to worry about the, the minutia uh, or any of the details set up, good to go. So that's it. I'm gonna go pick up these guys right now. I'm giving notes on the Crafts and Crafts podcast I have pumpkin there and then I have this which what am I supposed to do like I can't you know I can't like tell him to leave it's a rule anyone who has a cat understands this rule I, I'm stuck so we don't even get to be in a room and we don't get candy there's a drugstore down the street that could go and buy candy, but that's, I think that's missing the whole point. No, don't do that. Is that modeling? Yeah. Don't put your foot on that stool. Where do I look? How do you look? Where? For a model? Yeah. You, like, up high. Wait, don't scrunch your face, though. Why are you opening your mouth? Are you expecting <laughs> something to drop out of the sky into your mouth? I sure do wonder where Dr. Mike is. <laughs> we got the blood, uh -huh. but his bladder is like empty, so we're not gonna do that. So we okay. we'll just do like the three. Do you want my urine? No. We have to wait now for Scooter to make more urine, so we have to sit here until seven, which would be a lot easier to do if there was candy. Yeah. Okay. Are you? <laughs> Scooter's growling. Yeah. He wants candy. Does Doctor Mike know where? Like the candy stashed, and also knows what kind of candy I like. We, How much candy could they really be going through that it's just not out? I don't know. I know, I know. <laughs> Nothing? Uh, this is. No. Yeah, I, I will give some. I'm so, so sorry. When you come back, when you come back, Scooter. All right, there you go. You don't think I looked there? No. <laughs> you can't choose Have another one? Yeah. Oh, he <laughs> he This is hilarious. I just went and did. Uh, Greg Fitzsimmons' podcast, the Fitzdog Radio Show. And uh, by the way, this is the only evidence I have so far that I actually did that. And so I would have uh, covered it because it's exciting and it's a pretty cool uh, podcast, very cool podcast, but there's a reason that I didn't. Uh, when I got there, we just started talking and I, we were having a great conversation. So I just, it escaped my mind. Then I had my, my phone, my camera there the whole time. We did the podcast and then right at the end of the podcast where I was planning on shooting some stuff, like saying, showing that I was there, we picked back up on a conversation that we've been having about him directing my stand-up special. Greg Fitzsimmons is a, um, call, call him the godfather of, of stand-up. He's, he's been doing it since the 90s. Everybody in, in stand-up knows who he is. He's had a bunch of specials. He's just like, he's, all, he's, he's performing around town every single night. So like, he's just like, he's the guy. And we've gotten to be good friends. I just feel that like the day of the special, I don't want to have 
anything technical on my mind. I like my last special, but I was the director, meaning when I was up on stage, it was all technical. There was nothing like, you know, the, the guys that were doing the work, they of course had vision, but like there wasn't like a, a, a director, like just kind of shaping their vision about what they think the special should be like. I wasn't sure if Greg was gonna do it because he did pass on directing my previous, my Tender Looks special. We weren't yet, you know, like good friends at that point, so I don't know if he knew what to expect. Now that I've shown what I can do on my own and what I'm doing, I, I feel like maybe that is like a calling card to say like, no, this could be something special. So last year, when I went over and talked to Burt Kreischer about my special, he's like, you gotta get Greg Fitzsimmons to direct it. And I reached out to Greg and he was like, oh, I don't know if I wanna do that. And you know, I don't know if that's a path I wanna take. Both Burt and I saw how he is the guy and how he should be the guy to do that. This year, I talked to him again and I kind of was like, you should be directing. You should be directing, especially you should be directing stand-up specials. If you aren't sure about it, then just come and direct mine to see if it's something that you enjoy and something that you should be putting, a basket you should be putting eggs into. He just agreed to do it. I am a director, but I love being directed, especially with someone who's got like this strong vision. And then I think a shared vision, which, which we do. Yeah, anyway, that's great. So I, I'm now heading home to pick up Mel and Seamus and Juliana Dever to then go out to the Spaghetti Factory where we're gonna have lunch, something that's been planned all week. And now I'm running a little bit late. So, uh, Jules, take it. We are at the factory of spaghetti. It's so exciting. <laughs> the because, old factory of spaghetti. Yes, it's not the new one. Is Don't it, be is confused. It, is it ye old? It's ye not English, English. I'm, you guys. I'm, it's I'm, Italian. I'm, I'm, I'm making that up. It's clearly is, Italian. It, is it Italian? So Is Italian. it Italian? How did this come about? We started having you a conversation. You exploded it, which you I really love. Like you, you made a joke. We were like driving by and you were like, Mel, Mel, poking me. And they were like, what? No, yeah. this was while we were hiking. That's right, that's we were right. We hiking and you guys, we could go to the spaghetti. There fire. you go. Yeah. So yeah. On, a, on our hike don't last like, week. Don't you joke about And we were like, oh. That's sacrosanct. And then Seamus is like, <gasps> we, Seamus is like, how do I make sure I'm part of three Zane's World episodes <laughs> in a row? In a row. <laughs> Listen, being on Castle, that's great. You you know, and being in all, all, the, all the movies and shows you've done, that's great. But to be in Zane's World for three consecutive episodes... I've really weaseled my way into it. <laughs> it's almost like you're a it's series great. regular. Yeah, you are! You are your series! This is an arc. We'll see what happens next week. So Mel is a huge Spaghetti Factory fan. It was revealed on our hike that Seamus... By the way, to the point where they both follow... Old Spaghetti Factory on their Instagram. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. We decided we we're going to come here today, which is Wednesday, and I reached out to the Old Spaghetti Factory on their Instagram, told them who was coming and what a big deal it was, and I got ghosted. <laughs> now, I decided to do a little bit of research ahead of time, really because I wanted to find Spaghetti Factory songs. Really, because you. <laughs> Nobody ever. You, you did research because you found out that I did not do research about the hiking trail last last week, and I am not the best guy the to lead an experience. <laughs> exactly. To be clear, I was Googling songs about the Spaghetti Factory. Okay. And what? <laughs> well, because we were going to sing songs in the car. We right? talked Just about it. We did. Segment. We did, yeah. And then I found out this one's haunted. Okay. So because it used to be a school. A school. For dead Children? <laughs> I don't know. What does that mean? Well, they didn't. They started while they, they started. Still, uh, they were they alive. Were alive. They were yeah, alive the but beginning. they didn't graduate. And then what you said about the, <laughs> the what you said about the stairs is that true? Well, I think we need to go in and see. Okay, we'll find out. Clever Dever, wherever. Yes. So here. the 1909 yes. in front. That is not an address. That is the year this school was built. And then do something like, let me take you inside. <laughs> Let's go inside. <laughs> <laughs> Some children met their untimely end by falling down these stairs, and that's why there's a red rope here. If you go down there, you can hear the laughter of little children. I don't know why they're laughing. When they're <laughs> <laughs> they laughed all the way down the stairs. Yay! Back in 1909, that was known as a ride. <laughs> oh, oh, why that? Oh, why that's for you, Mr. Lamprey, Dever Zane. There is a um, chalkboard, and then, oh, there's a brain teaser. That's probably left over from when brain it was teaser. a school. And then this bar, I think, was probably here. This chalkboard also, back when it was a school. Seamus, why don't you take us to the other room? Uh, I will, follow me this way. Okay. We, we'll go into the parlor. 
It's a lot classier than some of the ones that, there's sort of a Victorian mess with a lot of the spaghetti factories, but okay. not here. It's kind of coordinated, but a little more sparse. It is, yeah. The Victorians had this thing they called um, terrorist uh, vacuumi, fear of empty spaces. Okay. So they used to just pile in all these rooms, just like plants and, and lights and everything. So normally that's what spaghetti factories look like, but this one is a little bit more sparse. Does it make you excited? Yeah. <laughs> Need to, they need to get the dimmer down. Just yeah, so they do. It's, 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 it's quite bright. But maybe they did because... You can hide a lot of things by not... That's true. That's true. So I'm going to think that the, like, I want to think that that map is left over from when... From the children? From when the children needed to learn about such things. This is how they used to keep them warm in one month that it's cold in Duarte? Hot glass airtight Florence. They make the best... Um, these... Go ahead, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a wide shot. Oh, oh there you go. <laughs> hold on, hold on everybody. Zane, yeah. you know how to when we get to your stop? Yeah, yeah, we're just <laughs> And here's the story of, of the haunting. Okay, there you go. We have got ourselves uh Jules, what is this? This is the Sicilian cheese bread. Okay, Sicilian cheese bread. Imported from Sicily. And then this they is the artichoke, um, spinach artichoke <laughs> dip. I mean, really resplendent. I'm gonna use the restroom. Also, just to get a break from those guys. Oh my God. I have to investigate this haunting business. Here are photographs of children. I'm gonna have to, uh, where's the men's room? I'm gonna figure this out. I'll do some more research, I'll let you know. What's this? I'm taking the elevator. Do you ever like going in areas where you're not supposed to go? And then you just know you can play stupid if someone catches you? That's what's happening now. It's the bread. Okay. We have a draft of wine here. And then, Seamus, what did you get? Oh, look at this beautiful Golden Road IPA. That's a Golden Road IPA? It's nice and cloudy. How's it taste? The right balance of hops. Yeah. Citrus. It's bright and it's got some depth. You're not going to go wrong with Golden Road. No. Uh, guys, no. how is your uh, house Chianti? Just pouring it right <laughs> okay. now. We haven't even tried it. So yet. excited. I'm pleased with my choice, everybody. Cheers. No, good cheers. 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 Hands in the vehicle. Brody, Look at that. Brody cheese bread. Wow. wow. This is what happens. If you sit here for long enough, <laughs> we'll just be like, we'll just give you food so you guys leave. This is perfect. They look hungry. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. I'm making the jerk. <laughs> All I said was, what'd you get, honey? She's like, yeah, there we are. And then time... you threw a pepper out the window. Every time you I come, you get the same thing. Huh? And then you want to ask me all these questions about it. All I said was, the all I said was, <laughs> what did you get? Thing anyways. I said, what did you get? Why and is then, it a and discussion? Then, <laughs> it, this is it. This is it. This is what I deal You're with. You're gonna end up getting the same thing. And apparently, I did. You're embarrassing me in front of the Devers. <laughs> yes, I, I ate all. I ate all my food. That's the way I was, I was taught. Wondering what was wrong with me? I, I feel. I feel a little sick. Guys. What's that? Oh, that's mine. <laughs> Cheers. Mine's green. Oh. Cheers. Spaghetti Factory. This is the <laughs> Old Spaghetti Factory. Watching history and ghost stories of here at the Old Spaghetti Factory. And here it has at the bottom a resident ghost outside the building caught on camera, regular size, and then zoomed in. And if you zoom in enough, you'll see that it's right there. It's okay, I'm zooming in on the ghost. On the wall. Right there. <laughs> at the Old Spaghetti Factory. <laughs> No, it's from a six quarter cup. No, I'm fine. I just learned how to read We've now been in the trolley car. We got here at 345. What time is it? 638. We've been here for near. So can we leave at 645? Yes. What? That's three hours. Three hours. That's not bad. That's. That'll be a record. Very Italian. <laughs> Very slow. Very yeah. This is something that needs to be talked about, and that is that Nick Jerry, who will show you in a second, he's the guy holding the camera. And you've seen him before. He's, I mean, he's open for me. 
234 stand-up shows. He's from Tacoma, Washington. But I don't know why I threw that in there. But he, as long as I've known him, has had a beard, and now he has a. <laughs> now I have two chins. Wow. Yeah. There's gonna be one line of people trying to get into the brewery to see stand up and one line of just girls and guys just all yeah. trying to get his digits any luck i need all the followers i can get yep. show number 235 today as one of the last socal shows before we do the special on the 13th in the real world right now it is the f it's the fourth wait a second it's your birthday oh yeah <laughs> It is my birthday. Happy birthday. 40 Happy birth years, years old. Holy yeah. This is your 40th birthday? I yeah. just realized it? I got free guacamole at Chipotle. That's why you said on your birthday, but you can, you get it for your whole birthday. It's month. on your birthday. I, I would have gotten you a Chipotle. We just went and ate at Chipotle. I would have gotten you a cake. This is so exciting. A, a, gu a guacamole cake? I don't care. I don't even know. I'd take it. <laughs> I do know that Nick's birthday is on May 4th because it's that Star Wars day, May the 4th, be with you kind of a thing. And so I always remember it. I thought today was the third and now it's the fourth. So I definitely have to get him a cake at some point and probably bring it up in the middle of his set. Would you agree that I should do that? Yeah, see, exactly. So I'm gonna figure it out. I'll make it happen. Uh, let's see, 24, 48, close enough. <laughs> That is gonna be a blaze. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Dina. That's 40. Happy birthday to you. Blow it. Get it. <laughs> It's all right. It's a uh, happy birthday. This is his 40th birthday. That's amazing, you guys. Give it up. I know I heard it. I'm on stage in probably 30 seconds. They just make me look like it should be a bouncer at a treehouse. That's all they're doing for me. Yeah, if we were in England. I didn't do that. I didn't cross over that. I saw that Nick yesterday had a pretty snazzy mustache. And so now I got a cool mustache too. We're the Mustache Brothers. Hmm. We are on our way to Vista, California, which is, uh, just north of San Diego, we're driving from Los Angeles. Yes. And the driving time is three hours and 15 minutes. So we're gonna stop over at Gamecraft because we forgot to bring the VIP pins last night. Go! And guess whose birthday it isn't anymore. Now you're just old. Just now old. I'm just some normal 40 year old. Yeah. Now Nick's driving and I just realized that yesterday was a holiday for Nick but today is Cinco de Mayo. Oh, tell them, tell them where we just ate. Nick, tell them, tell them where we just ate. Tell them, tell them. The most them. authentic Mexican restaurant it has, ever found. Yes. Cheap. Chipotle. Chipotle. <laughs> Chipotle. We, when we're on the road, and this might be weird, I think, to people. We eat at Chipotle how often? Like, like <laughs> how often? Every day. Every day, yeah, yeah. I started going there so that, like, you can kind of, you can like find healthy options. Like, you, oh, I just want chicken and rice and vegetables, whatever. And Nick finds a way to, <laughs> wait, well, we can add the cheese. I just and get a sour bowl of triple queso. That's all I get. It's a bowl of queso. Today, last year, Cinco de Mayo of 2022, we were in Bend, Oregon at Silver Creek. Here's what contributed to it not being a great show for you. And that is that it was Cinco de Mayo. The place was filled with white people. It was a full bar. On Cinco de Mayo, white people think they need to drink tequila. When Nick took the stage, what percentage? A quarter? 
No, but I, I think it was. It felt the, like it. The yeah, the aggr the aggressive loudness of the probably eight percent of people that were in the audience. I think it felt like they were scattered. They were scattered. I think it felt like uh, twenty five percent of the room was hammered. And then my worst show was Patchog. That was right, Patchog, Long Island, on Long Island at Blue Point Brewing Company because I was doing all new material. I ate a big bag of <laughs> on stage because I thought it'd be funny. I just brought it the bag and I was like, hey, check this out. I learned from my experience, you got pepper in the new stuff, and Nick learned, what did you learn? To not suck uh, yeah. <laughs> as a comedian when things get out of hand. Yeah. To yeah. not be precious about things. We've yeah. also talked about this three different times publicly. I wonder if it's old news. It's old news. All right, we're going <laughs> to... I just have realized we Nick, talked about it on two podcasts about yeah. this. Nick and I and our mustaches will see you at the brewery. I miss Mel. Everywhere I go, something reminds me of her. <laughs> me too. <laughs> me too. Hey! So I'm here with Rick and Jeff, and we are at Booze Brothers, and these, these are not the Booze Brothers, they are imposters. It looks weird because it looks like in the video that I'm doing with my phone that I'm holding a microphone that is somehow plugged into the phone, but it's not. <laughs> it is not. So, yeah. Yeah. So, so, it's going to be a little long today. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing a podcast, it's called The Boilermaker. No, what's it called? Boil Over. <laughs> boil Over. Boilermaker's good, but boil it's Boil Over. Boil, 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 boil Over. over. It's, a, it's a brewing, it's a beer podcast, and I'm on it. And now I'm gonna go do it and turn this off. Okay, we just finished the podcast. I, you were very good, you were very good. I was awesome. Okay, and now we're gonna go into the show space, do my, my Q&A up here after I say hi to you. Hi, this is you. Who's that dog? It's a selfie. I'm doing what I do a lot before these shows and that is just let Nick set up and then I do walkabout but I don't know I, I used to like be way more involved and I kind of you know maybe micromanage when we started out but now Nick has it down to a science I just get out of his hair which is great because I just take a walk clear my head make some phone calls look at nature and quite frankly I get to like explore uh the country I'm either in a city walking around the city or I'm um out in the you know the country like this which is Murrieta California which is near Temecula, California. The brewery is right over there. It's in, uh, like, right there, right there, that's the brewery. I didn't know you could have so many beehives in one place. I thought you'd had to have, like, a box. <laughs> Do we even talk about the fact that we're here at this brewery? We are here at this brewery. This is the brewery that we, we're now leaving. It's winter. <laughs> it's late. Uh, Solaris, Marietta, next. I'm up here hiking, doing the trail behind my house. To just clear my mind and process everything because there have been so many moving pieces and honestly so many hurdles to overcome to get this special made. It looked like possibly it wasn't gonna happen. Uh, and then we dealt with that and everything is 100% full steam ahead. Uh, all the gear, everything's been rented. All the people have been booked. Um, what I'm excited about, basically transitioning like today, Sunday, and really kind of why I'm up here clearing my head is that I get to basically, now that everything is in place and I've put all these amazing people in position, that I'm able to hand the reins off to people that are amazing what they do and that I trust. Number one, is Adam Horner. He's the producer of the of this year's special. He also produced my last special. He deserves a lot of credit for just sticking with it uh, through all the challenges. And I'm super excited that he's back on board to do this special. And then Greg Fitzsimmons, 
who is a legendary comedian and a four-time Emmy-winning writer, has agreed to direct this special, which is amazing. This week, I have to compartmentalize my priorities and really focus on being the talent and an entertainer and just having fun and trusting all of the players that are in a position to make this thing amazing. So I'm back here doing this hike behind my house, just processing everything that's happened this week and processing the, the special and everything that's to come. And um, thinking about the fact that Greg Fitzsimmons, this you know legendary comedian and an Emmy winning writer is now directing this special. And thinking about the fact that Burt Kreischer was the guy who was like, you gotta get Greg to direct your special. And, um, and now it's happening and I'm walking along the trail and then there's Bert standing there, Bert Kreischer and his family. And I was like, Bert. <laughs> and we talked about it for a second. I didn't want to pull the camera out. And uh, um, you know, I told him about Greg coming on and uh, he's super excited. I'm gonna be on his podcast. He's gonna be on my podcast coming up. And then he invited Mel and I to the premiere of The Machine, uh, his movie coming out on the 25th. So uh, yeah, so the end of a crazy week and the beginning of most definitely a crazier one. Maybe I will hit, maybe I will get hit in the face less this week by, by the way.